Good morning. Great to have you here with us. So glad that you could join us. I know God is going to do something for us today. Uh, let's, let's just bow our heads uh, before we get in to the word of the Lord and into our worship service. Glad that you're here. Bow your heads with me, would you kindly? Father in heaven, we, we just give you glory for what you've done for us this past week. We thank you for bringing us into another service where we can turn to you, learn more about you, honor you, and give you glory. Father, for all those who are here who are listening now to your word through this service, we ask a special anointing on them so that things might be well where you have placed them. Remind them they're valuable and you have not let go of them at all. We ask for your presence in this service with us now. This we pray in your son's name by his saving blood and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for joining us. I know that you have had trials in the week and I know that you've had some victories in the week. We'd love to hear about them. Send us your prayer request so that we continue to uh, pray with you. Even if you have celebration, something that has gone well we ask that you would share those celebrations with us so that we can pray the prayer of thanksgiving on your behalf. Continue to connect with us in this way. Now, we have a study that we'll go into. It'll be the first of three, taking a look at uh, the ministry of Joshua at the very beginning and see what we can learn in our own lives from that. But before we begin our first portion of that, take a look at this musical selection. Listen to the words that God has for you. And after this song of meditation, we'll come back and we'll jump into the word of the Lord. Thank you for being here. I shall go on. 
yet we care to prove the love for me, the voices of a million. Welcome back. Wasn't that just lovely? The Word of God in song. The Word of God applied to our lives through song. Well, we're glad you could be here with us today. I'm glad that you can start off uh, this day with us. And we are at the very beginning of a three-part series looking at the ministry of Joshua. I'd invite you to join me in Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Uh, we'll first take a look at God's command to Joshua. And then, by God's grace, next Sabbath, we'll take a look at God's promise to Joshua. And then, by God's grace, on the third Sabbath, we will take a look at the instruction God has for us so that we can be as prosperous as he meant Joshua to be. But we're going to first take a look at God's command and instruction to Joshua. Really, God's command and instruction to us. Join me, if you would, in the book of Joshua. The context of the book of Joshua here now, 
in the first chapter is that Moses has passed away. Their leader has gone. And the question has to be for these two and a half million Israelites, what happens now that the leader has moved on? Even Joshua has questions. And while scripture does not show us the prayer that he prays to God and the concerns that he has and the anxiety he must have for this new horizon, God provides for us in this book the template for all those who would follow God's way. What God says to us when we're unsure about the challenges ahead. Joshua, beginning, Joshua, the first chapter, and, and I want to begin at verse 2. Joshua, the first chapter, and I want to begin at verse 2. Here's what it says. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, get up. I, I, I know that some uh, uh, thing has happened that you had not expected. I, I know that you, you had hoped that it would work out one way. I know that this is devastating to you. I, I, I know that this has brought you down emotionally. I know that this has challenged you. But my command, my first command is arise. Uh, God means for his people to continue even when challenges take place. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, arise. But, but just standing up from, from, from my, my wallowing in my guilt and my concerns and my challenges is not enough. I, I can't stay where I am. He says, arise and go over. I, I don't want you to stay where you are. I want you to arise and go over. I, I, there's, there, the, the go over suggests that there is an obstacle here. And he's saying, arise and go, knowing there's going to be a challenge in the going over. I, he does not say, take it easy and you'll just, you'll, you, you, you'll just float on in. He says, arise and go over. I'm not going to move the challenge. And sometimes we pray to God, Lord, I can't do it. I can't take it. I'm not sure how it's going to work out. This is unfair. And sometimes his answer is, arise and go over. Don't sit and muse about the problem. Arise, but don't stand up and look at the problem. We need you to be active, God is saying. Go over. But go over where? What is the challenge that faces them? He says, go over this Jordan. Arise. I, I, I made some promises to you. I, I, I have a future for you. I, I, you won't be able to experience it if you stay here, but you can't just stand up where you are and experience my promises over there. You're going to have to go over. But what is the thing that he says you need to go over? Go over this Jordan. I want you to know that from where they stood, from where Joshua was, he could see the promised land. Uh, from where they stood, they could see Canaan. From where they stood, the promises were clear. The only problem is that there was something between them and the promises of God. Uh, there, Jordan was there in front of them. Unless you think that Jordan is some sweet waters moving placidly down, uh, uh, I want to change your mindset of that. 
Let me tell you a little bit about Jordan. Jordan, uh, Jordan River uh, it, it starts on uh, Mount uh, Harem. And, and Mount Harem is, is over 9,000 feet high. And, and, and Mount Harem comes and dumps into the Sea of Galilee, and then from there it goes uh, into the, the Dead Sea. Uh, the, the, the Sea of Galilee is 600 feet below sea level, so you add that to the 900, uh, 9,000 feet, and this is quite the drop. The velocity of Jordan is no joke. So when you come to Jordan now, especially if it's in the spring when, when uh, the, the, the ice and the snow is melting and there's more accumulation uh, of, of, of water coming down, the banks flood. And it's, it's, I mean, it's not a joke to pass through. So, so if you start here, you, you may end up over there by the time you get on the other side of Jordan. And, 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 and who knows what's in the riverbed? And it, it's just dangerous to cross. So God's promise is on the other side. But this raging Jordan is in front of them. That question then becomes for me, when God says, I promised you this, but there's a Jordan in front of you, what do you focus on? Because you can see both. The promise of God, the challenge before you. The promise and hope of the Lord, the daunting task before you. A life eternal with Lord, but devastation down here. What do you focus on? For you can see clearly both these things. In Hebrews chapter 12, it tells us looking away from all other things and unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In your King James Version, it says, look unto Jesus. The original, look away from all other things. It's an active, it's a looking away from all other things. So while the Jordan is there, I ought to be focused on Jesus. I, I ought to be focused on his promises. I ought to be focused on his word. I, I can't look at both and succeed. I've got to go through Jordan, but, but I've got to go through it with the promises of Jesus, with the hope of Jesus, through the strength of Jesus, with my eyes steadfast on Jesus. Arise and go over this Jordan. I wonder if he's speaking to you this morning. Get up. And let's get over this thing. What is your Jordan in front of you? Is it within your marriage? Arise and get over this Jordan. Is it in your family? Arise and get up over this Jordan. Is it a daunting situation on the job? Arise and get up over this Jordan. Uh, God is not suggesting that this instruction is there absent him. Later on in these texts, as we'll take a look at over the next few weeks, we'll come to find that God is right next to them. He will not leave them. In fact, he'll say, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. So their victory is, is bound up in the promise of God. And what God says, God will do. All they have to do now is arise. Make up their mind that they're going to go over. Well, if you're like me, there's a question that comes to mind. How do I come over? And this challenge that has had me down for years, how do I all of a sudden get over? I need a different kind of power than the power I have. Well, there is a beautiful, uh, a beautiful story about Elijah and Elisha. Uh, you know the story perhaps well. It's found in 2 Kings chapter 2. Elijah is told by God, 
that the Lord is going to take him up to glory. So he knows he's going to have to depart. And he has uh, an apprentice, Elisha, who will be his replacement when he leaves. And, and, and he's got some other folk he needs to talk to. And, and he goes from uh, one school uh, in, 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 uh, in Gilgal, uh, and he goes over uh, to Bethel. And, and he talks to those school of prophets there, and, 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 and he tells Elisha, Elijah tells Elisha, listen, stay here with these folk here. I'm going to leave Gilgal. I'm going to Bethel. But Elisha does not want to leave Elijah. And so he says, no, 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 I'm going with you. And they go on over to Bethel. When they get on over to Bethel, um, uh, then, then uh, he speaks to those folk there at the, the school of the, that prophet. And he decides to go over to Jericho. And when he goes over to, 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 Jer to, to Jericho, uh, he says, listen, uh, I want you to stay over here in Bethel while I go to Jericho. And, and Elisha says to Elijah, no, 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 you're not doing that. You're not leaving me behind. I want to stay with you. And, and, and then from Jericho, he's now got to go over Jordan. And Elisha says, I'm still going with you. And and, and, and Elijah and Elisha come to this place where in order to go to their next destination, they've got the Jordan River right in front of them. And it's raging and it's moving and it, it is with some difficulty one would look at it and see how we might be able to get over this. Here we got two prophets, one about to go to glory, one about to take his place. And the river is right in front of them. And Elijah, the senior prophet, removes his mantle and folds it up. And, and I just want to read to you uh, um, what he says. Verse 8 of 2 Kings chapter 2. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they divided hither and thither, so that the two went over on dry ground. He takes his mantle and he wraps it together and he slaps the waters and they were able to walk over on dry ground. Man, I wish, I wish, I, 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 I wish you could understand that if this is possible for Elijah, then it's possible for you. That when you are walking in the will of God, he gives you the ability to remove your Jordan to go across on dry ground. And this is not the first time he's done it now for his people. He has done this before. In the Exodus, he did it at the Red Sea. And also, he did it when Joshua needed now to come and cross. Those 40 years difference, God had done this. Here we are, uh, years later, in the book of the Kings, and these two prophets walk over on dry ground. Now, the drama of it is that when they get on the other side, Elisha, the younger prophet, says to Elijah, the older prophet, uh, 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 I need something before you go. He says, well, I can see that. What do you want? He says, I want a double portion of your spirit. He wants a double portion of the Holy Spirit power that's in Elijah's life. And Elijah says, now, that's not mine to give. But I tell you what, when I go up, if my mantle falls, then you'll have what you've asked for. Sure enough, the fiery chariot comes and as a whirlwind takes him up. And sure enough, the mantle of Elijah falls from him to the ground. And Elisha is now by himself. And he took up the mantle, verse 13, and went back and stood at the banks of Jordan. I just want you to imagine the worst problem you currently have right now. 
You might be feeling the pain of it. It might be your health. It might be your children. It might be your spouse. It might be your family. It might be your church. It might be your job. It might be the political landscape. It might be the injustice of the world. It might be too much media. It might be loneliness. It might be heartache. It might be disappointment. Whatever your Jordan is, I want you to just put it in front of you right now. Uh, because you see, Elisha is now standing on the banks of the raging Jordan. And the question is, now that Elijah is gone, what is Elisha going to do? Just like Moses had died, what's Joshua now going to do? And you have this moving from one leader to a next, from one person to a next, but the challenge remains the same. And what will you do when you stand in front of your Jordan? Well, Elisha it says, took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and then said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And what he's asking is, do I have the power? Is the same thing going to happen if I a, a, a express the same amount of faith? If I, do I have the Holy Spirit power that Elijah had? Where? is the Lord God of Elijah. And when he also smite the waters, they parted hither and thither. And brother man walked all the way through on dry ground. And I'm telling you, how can you understand this about Elijah and understand this about Elisha, but not understand this about you? That God has the power to divide your challenges. That God has the power to allow you to walk through on dry ground when all they set for you was a flood, was a torrent. God has the power to do that. And he'll do that for you today. He can do that for you right now. But you will have to express the type of faith that Elisha expressed the kind of belief that Joshua had. We come back now. God says, Joshua, my son, your leader, your predecessor, your, your friend, your mentor, he's gone. But I believe you have what it takes to cross over. And, and maybe for some of you, your spouse has passed, is gone. Maybe for some of you, some relative that you depended on, your prayer warrior is gone. Uh, maybe for some of you, an opportunity is gone. Uh, for some of you, uh, uh, maybe the person who was your, 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 your sponsor in some portion of life it's no longer there, and it's gone. Maybe some mechanism that God had in place so you could get through, and you were depending on it, and now it's gone. And here you are, musing about the fact that it's gone, and God's got the nerve to come and say, arise. But he doesn't stop there. He says, and go over this challenge. Go over this Jordan. What do you do when you can see the promises of God and you can see the challenges of this earth? Well, They get over. They get into the promised land. But I want you to consider what needs to happen. The faith that is exercised by Elisha. The mindset that he had to ask for a double portion of Holy Spirit power. Without that Holy Spirit power, he could not make it through. And without faith, he could not make it through. And this combination is what you will need. Beg God in front of your Jordan for a double portion of Holy Spirit power. Beg God 
to increase your strength. Like the man with the demoniac son, I, I believe, but help me thou, my unbelief. I dial up my faith, Lord. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. Finisher means uh, 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 that, that he molds it, that he perfects it. He makes it larger, stronger, more enduring. Jesus does that. So this morning, I, I'm glad to bring to you the challenge of your Jordan. But I want to remind you about the promise of God just beyond your challenge. And I encourage you to exercise the faith needed so that you can prove the devil is a liar. You can make it through. Your children can make it through. Your family can make it through. And the reason I'm mentioning them and not just you, look at what the text says. Get up over this Jordan. You and all these with you arise and go over this Jordan. It's not just meant for you. It's meant for your spouse. It's meant for your children. It's meant for your parents, your grandparents. It's meant for your loved ones. God's showing you what's needed to get over. God's reminding you of his promises, and you get to now show somebody else how to get over, reminding them of the promises of God. If their focus is on the earthly, temporal hardships, then refocus their attention on the joys of eternal life with Christ so that they can focus on the right thing and with faith make it over. I sure hope this word finds a place in your heart. I know it's spinning in mine. One day, when the Lord splits those clouds with his presence, we will be forever over on the other side of the Jordan. I want that for you. I want that for you. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we, we are so grateful of your encouragement, your support, your guidance, your instruction. We're thankful for the power of your Holy Spirit that allows us to move from point A to point B to experience you in a completely different way than we had experienced you before. We want to cross over. We want to be in glory with you. We want to be on the other side. We just ask, Lord, that you would do what's necessary for us right now so that all in the hearing of my voice, all under the movement of your Holy Spirit right now might come to understand even more than they had before. What do I need to do to make it over with Jesus? Impress this upon our hearts, O oh Lord. We thank you for what you have done for us. We thank you. We honor you and bless your name. We do so by the power of your divine Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. I, I want to remind you uh, that if you'd love to contribute to Trinity Temple, uh, you can do so online. You can mail in. Uh, your offering, any tithe, we're asking that when you do that, if you mail it in, you do not send cash. Uh, we don't want to do that through the mail. Um, you can take a look at our website, and we've got other options of you being able to contribute to the ministry here of Trinity Temple. And remember, your prayer requests are also needed. Your prayer requests run, uh, fuel the personal ministries portion of our church, where we have folk that get together to pray about your needs. And we know that where there's more prayer, there's more power. And we want that for you. So please do send us your prayer requests. Enjoy the remaining hours of this day. We're glad you started it with us. God bless you real good.